Hey guys, how you going? Hope you're all doing very well. This evening I'm going to be doing a review from a film from Chile. So we're going to South America for this one, Spanish language English subtitles. It was released in 2008, directed by Pablo Lorraine, and this movie is called Tony Monero. And the story to Tony Monero is as follows. Santiago de Chile, 1978. As Pinochet's oppressive dictatorship continues to stamp down hard on civil liberties, Raúl Peralta escapes the tedium of everyday life by leading a small group of dancers and obsessing about Tony Monero, John Travolta's character in Saturday Night Fever. He lives for Saturday nights when he unleashes his passion for the film's music by imitating his idol. His dream of becoming a successful showbiz star takes a step closer to reality when the national television station announces a Tony Monero impersonation contest. But it's a rocky road to fulfilling his dreams. Prepare to go to any lengths to win. The sociopathic Raul's urge to become Tony Monero drives him to commit a series of crimes while his dance partners, who are involved in clandestine activities against Pinochet's regime, continue to be uh, prosecuted by the government's secret police. So it's a very troubled time in Chile's history. So it's a very political film, but at the same time it is a film about obsession and insanity. So set in 1970s in Chile, now the country was under the dictatorship of Augustin Pinochet. It's a moment in history that Chileans would like to forget, but it's brought back in vivid memory in this film. So uh, the movie basically it's set in Santiago, which is uh, the poor area of Santiago, and it revolves around the character of Raúl Peralta. He's the main character, and he is obsessed with the movie Saturday Night Fever. Now he goes to the cinema every single day, and he neglects his girlfriend in order to watch his idol, which is John Travolta's character Tony Monero. He basically recites every single line that John Travolta's character says. This guy doesn't know English, but he um, knows exactly the words that John Travolta is saying. So it shows you just the level of of obsession that Raúl is under. So every day he's going there and he's learning the moves of the film. And this is what he does for a living. Uh, he's not getting any money for it. And when people ask him what he does for a living, he says that he's in showbiz. But that's his dream. So he's really uh, leading a meaningless life. And it's a very depressing atmosphere that he's in. He has a girlfriend who he neglects. He doesn't treat her right. He is having problems sexually. He's impotent, so he's unable to maintain an erection. But um, even that doesn't prevent him from oozing a lot of masculinity. He sees himself as above everybody because he can dance well. And his dream to becoming someone like Tony Monero is a step closer to reality when he realises that there is a television show that is staging a Tony Monero impersonation contest. So this is his ticket out of the slums. And he sees that if he trains hard enough and he lets nothing stand in his way, he will achieve um, the role of Tony Monero. He'll win a lot of money for it and he'll be able to tour the country. So this is what he has been living for. And whether or not he achieves this goal, I'm going to leave that up to you to find out for yourself. But hopefully that synopsis has left enough interest to you to go out there and see this movie for yourself. Now my thoughts on the movie. Very, very interesting idea for a film. It's taken the popular movie of Saturday, uh, Saturday Night Live and it has blended it in with a very serious subject matter. Now, this is in the time of Chile's uh, 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 suffering, I guess you could say. A very depressing atmosphere that the film has. It's set in the slums of Santiago and you really feel that none of these characters are going anywhere. It's a very hopeless, boring life that everybody is leading. And the cinematography that the director uses really captures the grotty sort of hopeless feeling that uh, people were feeling under the dictatorship of Pinochet. It wasn't a very fair government and I felt that the cinematography and the way that it was shot was done really well. Now, the director, Pablo Lorraine, he uses a handheld camera. I know a few people out there don't like that, but for the film, I actually thought it worked perfectly. It's a very nauseating feeling that the, the camera gives you, and that's exactly what the film does. It's a very nauseous kind of film. Very, very uncomfortable. I would label this as extreme. The violence is very brutal. It's not graphic, but it's just done in a very cruel way, and it uh, depicts a very chilling character that is Raul Peralta, a very underrated movie villain, I guess you could say, but a very real character, and it's also the villain of Pinochet's regime. It's forcing people 
to seek refuge in their imagination, in their fantasies. And that's exactly what happens to Raul. The harsh realities of his life he can escape by watching uh, Saturday Night Fever. So you can sympathise with the character for the circumstances he's under. But how he chooses to get to his dream is just revolting. And the way he treats the women around him is equally as revolting. The sex scenes in this are very... Well, not... The sex scenes themselves aren't very graphic, but the nudity is. And the nudity is in no way arousing. The sexuality of this film is just excruciatingly awkward. Now, there is one uh, scene where, you know, every single loving scene in this film, it's really uncomfortable because uh, of the fact Raul is impotent. And the way he tries to get uh, an erection is just really, really disturbing. I actually thought the sexuality of the film was far more disturbing than the actual violence. It just shows you this guy he had no respect for women. He had no respect for anybody. And it was his dream was the only thing that matters. And he would even sacrifice his own family in uh, to the Pinochet government uh, in order to get what he wants. So on one hand, you've got the chilling character of Raul Peralta. And on the other hand, the army who are basically clamping down with an iron fist, prosecuting anybody that they find, um, accusing them of standing against the government, and you know what they do and how harsh they are is equally as brutal as what Ma Raul does. The ending was my only criticism of the film. I thought it was a little bit too abrupt, but you can kind of guess how it's going to happen. But I actually would have liked the fact that you could actually see it happen. Sometimes seeing less is best, but in this case, I actually thought that it would have been much better to actually uh, see rather than use your imagination. Soundtrack was really good. A lot of Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. There are a lot of clips from Saturday Night Fever, so if you're a fan of that movie and you want to see it used in a very different light, then this film will appeal to you. There's a lot of dancing, so there are a lot of dancers out there who might appreciate this sort of thing, but just be very careful. It's a very depressing film, and Pablo Lorraine has painted one of the most interesting characters imaginable. He is a villain, but at the same time, a very uh, human person, like a very real person. And it's the harsh realities that uh, contribute to making the monster that is Raul Peralta. So a very, very memorable film from Chile. Uh, the guy who plays Raul is uh, Alfredo Castro. Never heard of him before, but he is an actor to take note of. I hope he gets bigger roles because he played this villain really well. A very real... Um, atmosphere around him. He goes off at anything. He's got a very, very short fuse. There is a little bit of comedy thrown into this. Uh, there's a few laughs that I had, but it definitely isn't a comedy. It's a, a very harsh look at the realities of life under a dictatorship and the fact of you know, people getting lost in their fantasies. So, uh, yeah, a very, very memorable film. I'm going to give this four stars out of five. I highly recommend it. Alright, guys, that's my review. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you later.